In education, behaviorism is about utilizing reinforcements or punishments to shape student behaviors and outcomes. We can use this for teaching new information as well as behavior management. For example, a behaviorist teacher would reward students with gold stars or extra recess time when they correctly answer questions in a quiz. This employs positive reinforcement to encourage students to memorize the correct answers. The theory underpinning behaviorism is simple. Rewards increase the likelihood of a behavior, while punishments decrease the likelihood of a behavior. The most important thing for us to remember is that behaviorism has both benefits and limitations. So we need to know when to use it and, importantly, when not to use it. Here are some great moments when you can use behaviorism in your teaching. 1. With younger children, younger children tend to respond very positively to positive reinforcements. Stickers, awards and treats are highly motivating for them. 2. With children with autism, research within a specific area of behaviorism, known as applied behavior analysis, consistently shows that children with autism tend to respond very well to behaviorist techniques. Oftentimes, this is because children with autism need clear rules and guidelines. Behaviorism methods tend to give explicit information to children about the consequences of behaviors, which helps children with autism clearly understand expectations. Three. As a means to motivate, behaviorist techniques such as giving out grades for good work can be highly motivating. A student strives for an A grade because this is a reward for appropriate behavior. Here, we see that from young children to university students, behaviorism is an integral part of our education systems. Despite these benefits, there are clear downsides of behaviorism. Here are two. One, shallow learning. At its core, behaviorism incentivizes the correct response to a question. This generally leads students to try to memorize correct responses rather than digging deeper into understanding a topic. To give a simple example, a behaviorist method would encourage a student to memorize the fact that 5 times 5 equals 25. But this doesn't necessarily mean the student actually knows why 5 times 5 comes to 25. Other methods, such as constructivism, focus more on the process of learning rather than the outcome, which leads to deeper understanding. 2. Not addressing root behaviors. When using behaviorism as a behavior management technique, we tend to punish misbehavior without understanding why a student is misbehaving. Take the example of a young student who is wriggling and talkative all morning. They might get a punishment from the behaviorist teacher. But the teacher may be missing something here. Perhaps the student missed breakfast and needs an apple or is tired and needs a 20-minute sleep. In these instances, a humanist approach that looks at root behaviors will help the child more than a behaviorist approach that just focuses on a punishment. This introduction to behaviorism in education just scratches the surface. For next steps in your learning journey, I recommend exploring the difference between two forms of behaviorism, operant and classical conditioning. I've left links to guides on these two approaches to behaviorism in the pinned comment.